But first, tell me this hasn't happened to you. You go shopping and end up with something you didn't intend to buy and probably can't afford anyway. They got gotcha. you. Retail Secrets, that's today's Focus at Five. I shop when I feel like it. By impulse. I buy on impulse. I think they don't have enough for the older woman. Um, a lot of it is geared more toward the young. Things are so close together, it's hard to get around and, and look at what you want to look at. What upsets me the most when I go into a clothing store is that I can't find a salesperson to help me. <laughs> Sure, customers complain, but we keep on buying. That's because there's a method to what seems like a retailer's madness. Why do they do the things they do? Dr. Audrey Gusky is our guest today. She's a marketing consultant and professor at Duquesne University. And Dr. Gusky, let's take a look at some of the comments these people made. Why does it seem there are less salespeople and less help in the store? There's more self-service today. It's because there really is. Stores are trying to cut back because of the, de uh, the dic um, discounters trying to really cut prices. What's happening with a lot of the department stores is now they have to combat. So they've cut the number of sales clerks we actually have in the stores. And we're moving toward more self-service. A lot of stores, as you know, you can practically check yourself out. And unfortunately, in the future, we're going to be seeing more and more of that and less and less salespeople. Hmm. So, and that's all because of the discounters cutting into their profits. Exactly. Okay. And now it seems the stores, at least where I shop, they seem to be so crowded with merchandise. It's hard to even go through them and find your way and find what you want. Is there a, a method to that madness? Exactly. Retailers are doing that on purpose. They're calling that high density. And what they're feeling is they've got a tremendous amount of merchandise. They want to put it in the face of the consumers and they feel by putting it there more consumers are going to be likely to buy it and so it also gives a feel and excitement to the store and the more crowded the store is as far as more individuals it gives you almost a feel like you're at a rock concert or some kind of exciting sporting event so they want to have that feel and that excitement so they are crowding the stores more so they more. want to generate you gotta have it exactly what about the signage they use I mean if they put a sign sale or clearance I have to look I can't help it <laughs> the word sale tends to grab our attention we all want a bargain we all want to sale and so big bold red letter sale it's going to draw us to it whether it's actually a bargain or not and that's one of the things consumers need to be aware of whether it's an actual savings that they're having or not so beware of those sale signs so you really have to check your prices anyway absolutely now at the checkout it always it's invariable i look at all this stuff along the way and i think oh that's something i didn't even know i needed i need batteries for this or batteries for that what is, what about that point of sale where they get you at the checkout exactly there are more and more products being on display Display because they know that we're weak as consumers and we do a lot of impulsive shopping and if you see something as you're checking out I need this for the home you are more likely to buy it two out of three purchases are actually unplanned and when you're in the store one out of every three consumers is going to buy something on display so displays and point of purchase are extremely effective and retailers know that they're trying to jazz it up with colors and excitement and uh, all kinds of different displays in order to grab our attention so we're gonna be seeing well more it does more. work you see I mean I remember I, I worked when I was in college in, in a store and they had you know displays up and the men would come in and say just give me that whole outfit for my wife they can't exactly. picture it so they buy the whole display men are notorious for display so they are suckers for it <laughs> and retailers know that if men see it on the display they're going to want it what about those super stores that are coming so well actually they're here exactly with the super Kmart and a lot of the large mm -hmm. Walmarts unfortunately they're not doing as well as had been anticipated consumers are perceiving them as being too large and too immense they can't find the products they want they get lost in them we as an American society don't feel comfortable buying food in addition to a lot of other merchandise. So that particular notion of combining supermarkets and uh, regular merchandise isn't really working. And what happened is a lot of the Walmarts and Kmarts downsized, so not even as big as they had anticipated they would actually become. So I think we're going to be seeing not as many of these large superstores or mega stores. So what do you see as the future of retailing then, real quick? The future quick? of retailing is interesting because it seems like a lot of the department stores we're used to are going to become dinosaurs. We're going to be doing a lot of more home shopping, a lot more electronic shopping, and we're going to be really losing a lot of the department stores and, and retail feel that we have been accustomed to. Oh, and I think you have a few tips for us to exactly. leave with for the day. A couple of tips for consumers. First, you need to avoid impulse purchases. We as consumers get sort of swept up by the moment. You have to be very careful and stay on target and stay with your game plan. 
buy off season if you possibly can. Now is a good time to start buying winter clothes if you can. And um, if you can estimate your kids' sizes, it's a perfect time to find these things. Three, get to know your store and your sales clerk. It saves you time and money. You're going to know where the bargains are and going to be able to uh, take advantage of that. Beware of discount stores and factory outlets. A lot of times we assume that there are bargains there and they're not always there. And then finally, don't get caught in a shopping time crunch. Try to avoid, avoid that last minute hassle. I know a lot of you are waiting till Saturday night in order to buy your Chris Easter candy. <laughs> so that's probably not the best deal because you can't really investigate and, and determine a lot of the bargains that are out there. You buy whatever you see. So that's probably not a good way to save money. Well, all good advice, something we need to be reminded of every now and then. Thank you so much for joining Thank us you, as Lynn. always. And Stacy, back to you. Did you buy your Easter candy yet? Uh, no, I have not. But, You're waiting uh, for the bunny. I I'm knew it. I'm waiting for the bunny. But Audrey, I do have a question. It was interesting you said men are suckers for, for displays. Um, at the same time, I, I may be different, I don't know, but a lot of men that I know, we have one idea in mind, we go in the store, that's what we want, and that's it. And I was just wondering whether men are as affected as much by the high-density sort of idea. That's interesting. Cause, because it doesn't, I, I don't care for it myself. I want to find what I want, and that's it. Yeah, and I think that gets into the situation where men aren't really shoppers as women are. And so you want to get in, you know what you want, you buy it, and you're out of there. You don't want to mess around or spend any time. So that's why the crowding effect and the excitement and drawing you to stay in the store isn't going to work for most men. It doesn't work. I have to admit, though, also there is impulse, too. You see some Thing there. Yeah, that's okay. But I still like going through hardware stores more than anything else. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> right.